by eat maybe a nine or ten then if I'm like you know if I run a lot like maybe uh three to six miles or depending what kind of exercises I'm doing I will reduce my window um to the 10 a.m right after my run um that way again I can kind of get that protein and get some vitamins and get some of the rehydration going um, maybe drink that Gatorade right because that would break the fast because it's got 80 to depending on which Gatorade you do 80 to 200 calories so um if I yeah so if I run I break the one I make the window different and then I plan accordingly to that as well so meaning the next the day if I know I'm going to run right I'll I'll adjust uh, when I stop eating the day before <clears throat> so um for my blend of my diet the Josh McMullen diet, if we will, one day it'll get patented or created and I can have a nice uh, enterprise on it. I don't know. <laughs> um, so first uh, eating window, um, right? I drink black coffee. Got to take me vitamins. We'll do it a whole nother episode about vitamins and what your guys' thoughts are on vitamins and what vitamins to take. That seems one to be a little touchier one a little bit. Um, a lot of different articles say different things about the vitamins, but I take vitamins and then I drink an Atkins shake. So you can buy those at Walmart. I think the flavor is wonderful. I I do the chocolate one and I do the cafe mocha. Phenomenal. I mean, it's actually something I kind of look forward to drinking. That's how great the flavor is. It has a wonderful source of protein. So 30 grams of protein, which is really tough to get. If you look at all your other protein shakes, you're only getting 30, you know, 30 to 45 even or even more. Um, for some of the protein shakes, at least that's per scoop. Um, but then again, you're kind of getting a lot of extra calories and a lot of other stuff in there. So for me, this was a way to get a low amount of calories, a high amount of protein, and have something that's had other vitamins in it and it was going to be really healthy for you to drink. But also it's a meal replacement shake, right? So it's also going to make you uh, fuller for at least a three to four hour window. So I partner that up or pair that up with a black, cup of black coffee, uh, take my vitamins and that's kind of my first eating window is is that so Atkins shake black cup of coffee for the first window and if if any Atkins people ever listen to this podcast um, I'm not sponsored by you guys right now but I'm totally cool with being sponsored by you guys just throwing that out there not sponsored totally open to being sponsored so second window again, um, if I'm if I'm eating, depending on when I'm breaking that fast, right? If I'm breaking it at after a run at 10 a.m., then you know it might be three four hours later before I have my second eating window, my lunch. Um, I kind of do the same thing. I'm very boring. I'm able to kind of eat the same repetitive thing over and over again. Shout out to dad and mom for cooking spaghetti three nights a week for. 20 years um really helps you get into used to eating the same thing now they're totally going to get upset by that but i love them and i love spaghetti so no offense to them that was just just a just a joke um so i can eat the same thing over and over again so for me i can shake and another black cup of coffee i might throw in a protein bar just to kind of up the protein again and give it a little bit of variety um so i can shake black cup of coffee protein bar for the second window and dinner is kind of where I usually fall off the wagon in terms of dieting. Now, before I would be very strict about it. Now I'm in this phase of, you know, I'm 180, trying to lose a little bit of weight so I can kind of fib on my diet or, you know, fib on weight loss a little bit there. So, um, you know, try to get meat and vegetables. Um, I've heard a lot of people, you know, say if you're going to eat carbs, that's when you want to eat your carbs is at dinner time, kind of before your bed because it makes you tired. It can kind of help you, um, Go to sleep while, you know, just eating meats and vegetables, you know, really um, not going to feel as full uh, on that. So if I'm going to cheat, it's usually going to be for me at dinner. Um, And then I would say I kind of cut it off around six or seven regardless, right? Depending on even when I started, six or seven o'clock is usually when, when I'm done eating. One side tip that I found that really helps me stop eating at that certain time is actually just brushing your teeth right after because I really don't want to eat a snack after I've already put in the work and brush my teeth so other fun fact brush your teeth whenever you want to be done eating and maybe that'll kind of cut out the midnight snacking so kind of like combining all the tips together you got to find something that you know that's going to be comfortable for you that's going to meet your health and fitness goals right so if you're trying to lose weight 
regardless of what you do, um, what diet you stick on, you're going to have to, one, find something that you're going to do for a long term, not just, you know, six, three months, six months. Um, but one the tips I always recommend people, cut out your pop or soda, depending on what region of the country you're from. You might might be a soda person. Uh, reduce the amount of carbs, right? Cut out the bread, cut out the sodas, cut out the the junk food, the fast food. Watch portion sizes. Um, that's something that I've really tried to key on is how much I eat, which is why I'm such a such big on uh, on on the intermittent fasting is because it it kind of eventually does shrink your stomach size because you're cutting out that meal. So after after a three weeks, four weeks, you really won't feel as hungry during that time. I mean, you go twelve hours, and before you'd probably be ready to, you know, maybe you know stab somebody if they looked at you the wrong way because you're so hangry. Um, so eventually, you know, twelve hours you feel fine. Now again, you're going to feel hungry at sixteen hours, but it's it's not it's not terrible. So. It helps shrink your stomach size, which then when you go to eat the next couple of meals, right, you're not going to be able to eat as much. So really in the long run, it's going to help you out more. So uh, cutting out your portion sizes, how often you're eating and snacking, I've I've heard so many different things. So again, that's just your own fitness goals, your own health, and what works for your body. I know I know somebody who, who eats every couple of hours, but that really works well for their body, their and their style and their health habits. For me, if I ate every couple of hours, I would probably be 300 pounds again. And just it's just how my body works. So again, kind of like your faith, right? You got to seek out your own faith with much fear and trembling. Same thing with your diet. You're going to have to seek out your own diet with much fear and trembling. You got to put in the effort. You got to put in the research. Um, you also got to evaluate your food, your intake. And you also got to um, evaluate your relationship with food. I mean, I know back in the day I would eat to when I was completely full and past capacity. Um, I would use food as a crutch. I would use food as a reward method. You know, hey, you had a really good day at work. Hey, you graduated college. Hey, you got this. You know, celebrate with Oreos, pour that glass of milk. You had a good day. Or even if you had a bad day, right? Hey, you know, there's a there's a package of Oreos just waiting to comfort you after a long, hard day. And so... You've got to evaluate really what your relationship was with food, how you're going to approach all of this. I promise you when you're going to go through dieting, personal things are going to come up. Challenges are going going to seem to come up out of nowhere. Um, and that that's one of the things. That's why you got to assess, it, assess your relationship with food because if you're trying to accomplish that and accomplish something else, right, um, some of the emotions that you're going to experience through dieting are going to come up and it might my, my hinder you uh, from success so you got to evaluate where you're at emotionally where you're at physically where you're at mentally right spiritually because you're going to be tempted to do things because it's going to get you low or if you mess up on your diet it's going to make you feel low and not make you want to go back to it so keep pressing take your brick down each day and and, and realize that in you know one year's time you could be 52 pounds lighter you could be, for some of you that could be a completely different person you know, hopefully some of you out there are not trying to lose 52 pounds. Maybe you only need to lose 10 pounds. Just again, assess what your goals are, what your fitness level is, what your health level is. Uh, maybe include your doctor, include a nutritionist, include, you know, do go out and do your labs and see, hey, you know, do I have, what, what do doctors suggest you do? So, um, but you got to do something. I think that's the biggest thing is don't just keep researching and keep doing something or keep looking. Actually go out and do, you know, do small things, cut out junk food, cut out pop, cut out this, cut, you know, cut out uh, this or that, you know, whatever it is you want to cut out, just remove things, um, remove temptation. I, that's another thing as well, right? Is I know for a fact, even at this moment right now, with all the weight I've lost, I know if there's a jar of cookies or a jar of Oreos out there, those Oreos will be eight and not just one or two. There will be many Oreos <laughs> that will, uh, that will fall victim to, my love of Oreos. And, he, and there's a glass of milk that's gone. That's that's gone too. So, what's your relationship with food? What do you need to remove from your life? What can you do long term? What kind of research are you going to do? What what's your health standards? There's just so many questions that you're going to have to ask yourself and what you're going to do. But you're going to have to put in the effort, right? Like I said, this there's no magic pill. There's no magic solution or answer. The the solution is it's going to be hard work, and you can't go into it blind. I think you should go into it with research because you're going to have a lot less bumps. You know, uh, down the road, if you know, hey, I'm going to do intermittent fasting 
and I'm going to uh, reduce just my calories and I'm going to reduce my meal that I eat throughout the day and, and you're going to have a lot of long-term success. If you want to do keto and intermittent fasting, it's absolutely possible. It's super hard, but things are possible. And I think you need to challenge yourself because when you're done, when if you've lost whatever number you have, right, whether it's 5 pounds, 20 pounds, or 100 pounds, right, when you hit those numbers, you're going to feel pretty good about yourself and you're going you're gonna to realize I can overcome dieting. I can overcome anything. And that's so true. If you can overcome weight loss, that's going to be one of the hardest things that you're going to have to get through is is changing your eating habits and changing your weight. Because we're, we're, and we're in a culture today that doesn't emphasize um, weight loss and, and making it easy. It's There's so much junk out there that... It can be easy to get tempted and fall. I mean, just drive through drive through your local city and the smells alone will make you want to pull in and get a Whopper. You know, it, it's tempting out there. You can't go into Walmart without being tempted. And don't go into Walmart hungry. I know that, uh, that's probably a popular thing everyone says, but I promise most of my most of my stumbles have been going into Walmart hungry. Uh, with today's world, you could go and just have a grocery order. Don't put any oreos or junk food or anything like that into your into your cart just drive in pick them up and then get out of there so assess where your situation is see what you want to do to transform take account of of your past struggles see kind of do some reflective practice there see what in the past where have you struggled with with eating what will you know hinder you moving forward what's a diet you can do that you can have success in? i knew me i'm a big meat eater so having something like keto or having something like paleo that emphasized meat, I knew it was already going to have success with. And cutting out, I wasn't a big vegetable guy either. So having something that really wasn't going to emphasize those was going to be extremely successful for me. I knew I had the capacity to cut out, you know, cutting out a meal. So intermittent fasting was going to be successful for me. But what's going to be successful for you, right? Are, are you, my wife, not a big meat person, right? So her doing keto, not that she has to lose weight, but if her doing keto then it wouldn't be would not be successful at all because she there wouldn't be much for her to eat plus uh, I'm pretty sure lays potato chips don't count on keto or count for any diet and if there is a lays diet out there Shiloh would be the queen of it <laughs> I love you Shiloh all right so there are a lot of diets out there do your research um understand what the ins and outs are I gave just kind of a quick overview on some of my experiences with it but I think if you're you're going to go out there and you're going to research your own diets, I would recommend starting with Weight Watchers, right? The top five, uh, some of them I, I really hadn't, I didn't hear of before, but Weight Watchers is one that's been around for a long time. And it's been around for a long time and had a lot of success because, it's again, it's something that you can implement pretty easy in your life and, and have a lot of success in. Other tips, so just um, when going through... If you add in a little bit of exercise, right? If we're talking about back to the math problem real quick, my last tip is add in a little bit of exercise. I don't care if you have to go for a walk. I don't care if it's a bike ride, a swim. If you add just a touch of exercise along with your calorie, you can might stretch your your 500 calories into a 750 to 1,000 calorie deficit. And we're then talking about in six months to a year. I mean, I, I lost 60 pounds in one calendar year, which was a lot and it was tough. But it's possible. And to me, I was kind of fibbing on the diet. But I did a lot of intense exercise. I don't recommend that because in the long run, it's probably easier just to do better better dieting. So that's what I recommend is, is having a 500, at least a 500 calorie deficit in your life plus a little bit of exercise. And, and I guarantee you'll be transformed, right? If, if that's what this whole podcast is going to be about is how you can transform then weight's the, one of the biggest ones that you can transform with and one of the hardest to do. There's a lot of hard things out there, but dieting was was so tough trying to change your physical appearance. So again, send me your thoughts on Instagram. Send me your thoughts on, on dieting. What diets have worked for you? What other diets have you thought of? You know, If you have questions on intermittent fasting, if you have questions on on any of these topics, right? feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. It's Rev underscore McMullen 94. And then, like I said, eventually um, I would like to get a website going. That way we can have maybe more uh, email chats and stuff like that. So thank you again. Um, I appreciate those who've listened to the first episode. Family, friends, appreciate it. Um, 
if this one falls out into the void, that's fine too. I had, still had a lot of fun sitting in a room talking. So thank you for listening to Transformed. Uh, send me your thoughts and 